back, everyone, to the weekly flare. Do you like that flare? Yeah. Chris, why don't you tell all our fine viewers what you found out today? Well, what I did not know is that you have already started your episode one of Geeks Oh, of yeah, yeah, Justice. we started already. So we did. I think that would be a kind of a good way to, to kind of uh, start things up. I think it's really cool that you guys have done this podcast, and you guys have a great um, green screen in the background. Shh, it's not a green screen. We're in an actual studio it's, that it, looks like that. It's so Don't ruin all of our, awesome. our secrets, Chris. <laughs> it's an awesome we didn't record it right <laughs> here it's an awesome piece of equipment that we uh, they have um it, it it was it's easier than it, it's this is very strange with the green screens i spent a lot of time over the weekend working on the effect the visual effects for that because of the the video for the intro and then the green screen stuff um green screen is a weird thing it's very simple on the one hand to do the effect it's very difficult to get everything to look correct after you do the effect. Gotcha. So um, we don't have a huge recording area here. So getting far enough away from the green screen that you weren't getting a green glow on you. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that it wasn't wide enough for the the, what, the width of our green screen. Um, I didn't realize it was a big crease right over my right shoulder. Um, so that made it difficult to get the green screen to show correctly. And then the fact that the green screen itself was just creased because it wasn't stretched out all the way gave it in the background of a real fabric look like we had like a painted cloth hanging behind, like a, mm. like a canvas basically hanging behind us, which is fine. It I looks mean, fine. It still got the point yeah. the fact that crossed well. And for my first time doing the green screen, I think it turned out pretty well. Um, it's just... It's like I said, it's really simple on the one hand to do now because um, it's some, something that happens so much in video production that the tools to do it have been very refined and have a lot of control. On the flip side, if your video coming in doesn't have the green screen like perfect and there's some any kind of haloing around you with the green that the camera picks up on, it's going to show in the video. But it's cool. I'm really excited to keep it going and see what we can get it with it. How excited are you about this new podcast? I'm pretty excited. I mean, it's I like it because it. I don't talk about anything that we really talk about on this show. I mean, except for the occasional time I talk about superhero movies on here just because we talk about big movies. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we don't talk about anything similar. And even the times when we do talk about the same movie or in the future when we will, like, for instance, when Captain America comes out, It'll be from a very different point of view. Gotcha. This is more, when we talk about movies, it's more just from a, hey, you know, this is going on, we saw it, whatever. Um, whereas that's going to be from, hey, you know, how does this fit in with all the other superhero stuff going on? And how does this fit in as a superhero movie? And kind of more than that kind of stuff. As a uh, uh, as the sister podcast of the Weekly Flare, yeah, you um, say that. where can we find this new podcast you can go to geeksofjustus.com and find everything there okay and you guys are on itunes or are you working on putting it we on are already on itunes gotcha. stitcher youtube everywhere you can find the weekly flare it is there also i'll put a link in the show notes and uh, i probably won't put a lower third for it because i'm still trying to work out ours to make okay. them look sweet perfect so yeah definitely go check that out um yeah it's I... geeks of just us not justice but just us it's a play on words. Gotcha. Which, when you see it written out, you're like, what? And then when you say it, you're like, oh, exactly. it's a play on words. So, um, yeah, go check that out. I, I would actually like to have some advertisement for this show, kind of to yeah. take a look at. And maybe we can play some of the yeah, second. Yeah, I'm, work, I'm working on getting a little network stream together where we'll have our show, that show, possibly combo starters in it. So Everything's mixed in together. Yeah, I'm trying to get everything bit. so we can get a nice... One spot to get all these shows that don't really have a lot of overlap. So that way you can kind of get a lot of, a broad range of shows from one stream. Have you thought about uh, possibly getting um, other podcasts involved that you are not associated with, but you possibly listen to to get onto our channel? Uh, once I get everything going. But the thing is, everything I listen to on a podcast right now, they're already either part of something or big enough that they don't really gotcha. have any reason to be. Okay. So once I get everything going, then I'll start reaching out to newer podcasts and see what we can do. Awesome. Awesome. Speaking of uh, awesome and geeky stuff, 
Yeah. Yes. We have, uh, well, your favorite thing is to talk about Elon Musk's SpaceX. That is not my favorite thing to talk about. Space is my favorite thing to talk about, and he just happens to be in a lot of space news lately. And we always talk about him when something comes up. He does a lot of stuff. I he can't does. Help it. It's not he, my fault. I guess they, we've been trying to design um, a Hyperloop pool. Yes, a Hyperloop. Now, that is a... Do you know what a Hyperloop is? It's hard to kind of figure that out. Why don't you tell the viewers what you found out about a Hyperloop today? It's a tube that is uh, that is kind of like a tram or a... Like a bullet train. Lee has a bullet train that is uh, suspended by magnets. Yeah. That's exactly what MIT okay. did. So Elon Musk wanted it to be basically floating on a, on a layer of air. It was his vision for the, the way the Hyperloop would work. The MIT team that did this said that, um, no, nah, we want to use magnets. Mm -hmm. Probably because it's easier to predict what's going to happen. If you have a lot of magnets lined up, unlikely that they will become unmagnetized over time with, you know, the magnets crossing over them because the poles are going to push it away from each other, which is what keeps it floating. Gotcha. The air layer, you have to have somewhere to maintain that air layer. I guess they were worried that there'd be a bigger chance of failure by doing that. Okay. So they use magnets. That's, that's my assumption. I don't think it really said why they went with magnets over the air, but that's what I assume. So we so we I guess we can see that on Saturday a team from Massachusetts, well we can say MIT, MIT. won the first stage of the SpaceX Hyperloop design competition. Mm -hmm. um, that was held in Texas this weekend. Mm -hmm. So I think this is pretty cool that we have actually advanced to kind of uh, we've advanced. We've advanced. You know how fast that thing can move? How long? How much? The speed of sound. Speed of sound. Speed of sound. Now the only Not the speed of light. The speed of sound. This isn't a downside, but it's kind of upsetting to hear that the the longest distance that they will allow this to go is nine hundred miles. Yes. For an example, the California, distance from San Los Francisco. Angeles to San Francisco. Nine hundred miles. Nine hundred. But think miles. about it, though, that's like an eight hour drive. Yes. At the speed of sound, it'll take like what twenty minutes. Most likely twenty minutes. Yes. No, um, that's not right. What's the speed of sound? It says in there. How long does it say in there? It'll take oh. to go the 900 miles uh, from so San Francisco to Los Angeles. Will be about 8.2. It does not. S it doesn't say the actual time. Here we go. The students will aim to achieve a speed of 220, uh, 225 miles per hour during a vehicle's 22nd inaugural run. Okay, so let's say 220. That's not the speed of sound, is it? No, is it? no. Let's just say it's 200 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. 200 miles an hour, 900 miles. It's still cut the time significantly three hours yeah it's not a bit yeah. four hours about, four and, about hours. four and a half hours four and a half hours so it's gotta take longer than eight hours to drive that distance yes it, it, that's that, like it's about a day from almost. san francisco to la most likely was it 12 hour drive 12 16 i don't know how long it takes to actually get from san francisco to la <laughs> that's a lot better it cuts it by a fourth a, a third let's see 70 miles an hour probably assuming there's no traffic 900 miles if it was 100 miles it'd take nine hours so, yeah, probably about 10, 11 hours if you didn't stop at all. 12 hours yeah. if you didn't stop at all. Yeah. So that's not too bad, um, but we're we're continuing to advance. And um, some users, some listeners just yelling at us right now, like, your math just, is your so math off. Your math is so off. You're rounding way too much. <laughs> well, you know what? I do math all day as an engineer, so I'm allowed to round at night. Well, if the one thing that we can probably do is they can probably make something that goes from California to Colorado, and then from Colorado to... That's longer than 900 miles. Oh, my gosh. Uh, the 900 miles thing, you can go like major city to major city. Yeah. I think that's kind of the plan, right? Yeah. So you can do one from like California maybe to New Mexico. No, that's just for now. Surely after everything gets all worked out, you could go longer distances. But 900 miles in a tube like that is probably about as long as you want to go in any one sitting. Yes. I mean, they do Amtrak's from across the nation. Um, sure, but in the Amtrak has a bathroom. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I mean, like, people will take, like, 20-hour flights in an airplane, but an airplane has a bathroom. Yes. This thing doesn't have a bathroom, at least See, not right now. Not yet. And honestly, going the speed of sound, I don't think you want a bathroom. Because mm -mm. it's not like you're going to be able to use it. Exactly. I mean, it's gonna be awful. I, I get the whole relative motion thing. You're moving with it. Once everything's moving together, you can stand up and walk around. I get it. Uh, I don't know how all well that scales up to the speed of sound, though. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you know what I mean? Like you jump and it's, you're dead. They're gonna do a. They need to do a lot of testing. They're gonna have to do a lot of testing. Uh, and I mean, we're talking. It's gonna be like roller coaster style yeah. seatbelt, so you can't get up. Because think about it. Like if you're on a bus and you jump, you go backwards a little bit because mm-hmm. now the bus is moving under you. You have some forward momentum, but you immediately start to slow down. That if <sighs> the train is going the speed of sound underneath you. Let's see. What is the speed of sound? Let's look that up. Oh, uh, it's Mach one. Uh, three hundred and forty meters per second. Yes, it gets me in miles per hour or something useful. Yes, um, that doesn't really help me at all. Just uh, say the speed of sound in miles per hour. Let's see, here. speed of sound. This is a great radio. Right? Miles per hour. Here we go. Um, seven hundred sixty-seven. Okay, seven hundred sixty-seven wow. miles an hour. That's so that's an hour and a half trip to from Los Angeles to. Okay, San right. And that was what it said was the goal for the Hyperloop, right? Was the speed of sound. Yes, I did read that correctly. Mm-hmm. Okay, so imagine the thing's going 767 miles an hour, and you jump. You were getting slammed to the back. Now, I get relative motion is going to carry you forward since you're already moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. But you're also going to immediately start to decelerate. If you're standing near the back of that and you jump, that wall is going to smack into you. Now, granted, again, relative motion, so it won't be like, you know, kill you speeds, it's still going to hurt. Wow. I guess we'll see what happens. I'm just saying, like, I get it. You jump and you're going to move forward still because you're already going that direction. But Dude. at the same time, um, 70 miles an hour jumping, you know, the full relative change in motion isn't mm-hmm. that much. 700 miles an hour and jumping, even if you only, you know, lose speed by a couple miles an hour. So is this an advancement or a flop? No, this is a huge advancement. Okay, so you think it's going to be no, successful? No, no, no. I'm definitely behind this 100%. Okay. Don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that's probably a concern. Gotcha. Also, probably why it's only going 900 miles at a time, because you won't be able to get up and go to the bathroom. Um, yeah, I can... Man, I, don't, I just don't know. Like, you bring a lot of good questions. I, I'd have to, you'd have to sit down and do the math on yeah. it to figure out if someone were to jump, the air resistance, you know, all this stuff that would cause you to slow it down and mm. have actually be a difference in your location. Mm-hmm. Um, but speaking of things that uh, carry us from one place to another. Yes. Speaking of which. Speaking not, of things that move. Not the speed of sound. Quite and, the opposite. And we're going back 4,500 4, years. So almost the to the past. beginning of time. Almost the beginning of time, when it, Egypt was the huge, I guess. Um, it was a lot more significant. Yes, in world very, events, very. Maybe is a nice way of putting. Very it. big significance. It was the Rome of its time. Yeah, that's probably fair. Yeah, b- pretty fair. Pretty fair. But we have found um, a boat. We found. We didn't find it. I was there. I, didn't I even wish. Know. I wish. Charles University in Prague has unearthed. A f- uh, 4,500 year old boat. That's it, an old boat. Yes, it stands 59 feet long. Does it still float? I don't know. They, Probably they, not, because they, they were, said it was just planks. Yeah, it, it was like planks. A boat. But it, it was. And back in the days of the Egyptians and all of that and the sun gods, they used to bury the dead with their prized possessions. Yes. So people were buried with their cats and their gold and their uh, chairs and, and their boats. Just whatever they thought was important. Exactly. That they would need in the afterlife Mm -hmm. or want in the afterlife, as the case may be. Exactly. So if somebody died... um, Now, were you buried with your dead cat or was your cat still alive? That's a good point. Because the cat may have just ate your body. And they also were not into, like, desecrating the bodies because, you know, you want to go to the afterlife. What was it? Cats are the... What was it in the mummy? Uh, The cats are the opening to the underworld or whatever? They were like gods to the Egyptians, weren't they? Yes, they were. So, uh, it's it's weird. Um, Egyptians... They weren't like gods. They were worshipped, maybe. Yeah. Way of putting e- Egyptians it. are... Were very... They believed in a lot of different stuff. They pulled brains out of... They were of, very superstitious yes. people. They pulled brains out of noses. They... they were all superstitious yeah. to a point, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Looking back in time, I mean, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, but yeah, this is really, really cool. Um, you know, I guess they call it the third dynasty of King Huni. 
or Hanai or whatever. I doubt that's how you say it. Probably because not. Because they pronounce things very different. Uh, it was. I just. I just think it's a really cool story. It's hands also down. a very old boat. Uh, Probably I, the oldest boat ever found. Where the story also has to do with Texas A and M. Oh, do tell. They, uh, I guess we'll be studying the boat. Texas A&M will be studying the boat. Kind of like how like they... what? To study what kind of wood it is? Well, let's see. This year, the university will be studying boat building wait, wait, techniques. Wait. Are they going to do carbon dating on it? Because we all know how accurate that is. Yeah, very accurate. Sarcasm, if you're exactly. listening. Exactly. Sarcasm. I couldn't see yeah, definitely the faces. sarcastic faces <laughs> that were being made. Uh, the university will be studying boat building techniques, and I guess this is going to help because um, the Egyptians had very good ideas and building structures, kind of like how the Romans did. So um, I think it's a very interesting, very, very interesting, hands down. It's an interesting just, find. Um, we, do you think this is the oldest boat we've ever found? Um, I've never heard of an older boat being found. I know that the people say that um, the Ark is on top of a Turkish mountain that cannot be accessed. Has anyone seen it? No one has seen it. So is this, the, is this that boat's technically not found then? I'll be honest, this is probably one of the oldest boats most likely found. I th as far as I know, oldest boat found. Yes. Someone out there is probably yelling at us going, no, no. they found one that was some bizarre number of years old that I'm going to have to dispute somehow. The, but the same guy that was yelling at us about, he just no, knows different everything. Guy. Different guy. Different guy? Different okay. guy. We have two listeners at least, two so we got to make sure we reference both of them. So yeah, one side of the spectrum. Um, yeah, the future, the uh, the past, and the past. The future and the past. We have right there. That have, should be your segment: the future and the past. The and future find stories that are like identical, but identical, at different but lengths, different time periods. Oh my gosh, that is such a good thing to probably. Yeah, see do. how long you can carry that on. It's probably not very long. One week. One week, like this week. Our next week, I mean, because you have the Super Bowl, so you have like Super Bowl Fifty versus Super we Bowl. We can do one. Super Bowl Fifty. Yes, we can. Okay, so you got at least a, a good thing for next week. Assuming you can find good stories on it yes. that aren't just like the same thing everyone else is talking exactly. about. Exactly. So good luck. Yes. Uh, no, that'd be an interesting segment to do, though. But we'd have to find some very interesting things to mm. talk about. And we'd probably run out of things really fast. Yes. So maybe not. I don't know. Well, Chris, what do you say we wrap this little show up and put a nice bow on it? Send it, send it on its way to Send it on the, the way to internet. the world wide web so dear internet listeners and viewers if you would like to follow mr garcia on the internet you would go to never lose heart and that's on my twitter you would go my to twitter. the twitter the twitter the twitter is where you will find him i twitter and i twitter you can also find me on twitter at james walter i tweet and i've been tweeting more lately because i've been doing things that are interesting like your new podcast not the podcast necessarily in general, just things behind the scenes that that has involved. Gotcha. That's what I've been tweeting about. I mean, I did tweet out that it was on YouTube, now, mm. but that was more just because like I was like, oh, I finally uploaded it. Yay. Uh, of course, you can go to theweeklyflare.com to find out everything about the show, our bios, the blog that hasn't been updated in a very long time. Yeah, it's yeah, all there. That's about it. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you guys again in seven days. Peace.